In this Supreme Commander duel gap cast, you will see a race between a Paragon and a Maver. Yes, it's time for duel gap again, and the question is of course in favor of which team will become the fellow. Well, watch this video until the end to find out. My name is Kenosis, and before I introduce the players, please take a little moment to subscribe and hit the bell so that you won't miss any content. And let me start with Team 1. You introduce them and it's this side I will start with a not hype, light blue and he's going Cybran, already building those nice mass extractors. Then the naval player for <coughs> team one to the day, excuse me, it's Donny. And he is uh well uh, burgundy red, he's going Cybran also. Then their eco player, yellow, his name is Quidstorm, and he's going UEF. The first front player for Team 1, his name is Biggis Dickus. He's going light blue or yeah, light blue and um he's um well UEF. Then the second front player, his name is Angry Sin, he is Seraphim. And um we'll be going front soon, I guess. Then the northern air player, he is Cybran, he is a grayish and his name is Visions. Alright, the next team, Team 2, let's start with the Southern Air player. His name is Aweco Contact. He's a light red and he's a going Seraphim. Then their naval player, his name is Angry Dot. He is Aeon. And, uh, well, what is it? Beige? Then their eco player, a 1400 called Turna 1. This is Cybran and he is going purple and their first front player already walking towards the front is Lime Z3 strolling from his base killing those trees light green and he's UEF and our grey player for today a 1200 called Fragmaster also walking towards his front his name is Fragmaster and last but not least the Crow for Luck, a Cybran player, orange, and uh, well, he's building a nice T1 power ring around his T1 air factory to get enough energy flowing in there. Much adjacency, you know, to build fast transports and that kind of stuff. And bombers, of course. Talking about transports. It's uh, Biggest Dick is already sending a transport laden with NGs towards the middle. Um, actually, he's dropping some of that, his mass points, so he gets them really fast. I can imagine he would also get these stones, and exactly that's what he does. He's dropping the rest here, and one is leaving for those two stones and maybe he could succeed at doing that. Another drop though from Angry Dot who has the same idea. Oh this is fantastic look at this he's just stealing those stones and why shouldn't he? Two stones from um, Biggest Diggers which don't go into his mass cover but which um, May Andri Angry Dot makes um, a good use of. Anyway, he, um, he already has almost two land factories up in the mill, and I can imagine some nice T1 land spam could be flowing out of here soon enough. Lime is a little bit behind with making land factories he's going a uh, he's going t2 though it's a fast t2 i guess and that said his engineer has been killed by this attack bomber so he is sending another if this one gets killed there will be no radars for him oh my goodness and it is he uh, even cancels his t2 upgrade i think after he saw that his two engines got killed and maybe he even saw what's happening there let's see yes he does um not enough factories on the other side though we have the same 
same, you know, the same build, actually not same build, but I mean the same amount of factories where um, Fragmaster has four factories here, Angry Sin doesn't. Maybe Angry Sin is uh, prioritizing his maxes in his base. And um, exactly that's what Pickers Diggers is not doing. Of course, he is, has been sending all his mass, early mass, into those four land factories and the spam that's coming out of there. Anyway, Angry Sin is, um, has built these three, four land factories very fast. Let's see how Fragmaster is doing. He is um, not prioritizing any T2 maxes here. Um, Lime does. He has two T2 mass extractors. Three actually. Ah, yeah, well, that's why you can build any factories mid. I think it's a bit risky, but if you do it well, if he um, manages to defend this, could be very rewarding. Rewarding. So I'm um, quite enthusiastic now. He must have a, must have a plan. He already, no, he doesn't have T2. So he sees that T2 upgrade from Fragmaster, and he think it's faster. Thinks it's faster to um, to assist that. They just must have T2 to defend here. So um, against this spam, Fragmaster does have some um, some T2. So it's not that they don't have anything. It's just they are not so not that mobile. Let's uh, keep it at that. Um, so angry scene is going gun now. Dickus Biggus already has T2 and obviously he's um, uh, well I think he's going to uh, keep this so he's making a stand all or nothing in the middle. Let's see how Navy's doing. Angry Dot has been sending a frigate right into his base. I think um, Looking for engineer kills here. Maybe even one, two, three, four frigates hitting a T2 mass extractor in the beginning could be so very rewarding. It wasn't it that um, Wheatstorm has made a little attack submarine and one frigate. So um, that won't work for now. Immediately after the T2 upgrade, uh, Fragmaster is going nano. I hope for him he finishes that. It's only 15 seconds. I think he will, but man, the, they are on the verge of, um, of pushing. And it seems they are doing it now. 95. Oh man, he can use that nano repair right now so well. And the gun... Also, half a minute, could he finish that, that would be epic for him, I mean good for him. Um, does have a little T1 spam here, he could use it right on the, the flank over there against two commanders. He's 50% at uh, completing his gun upgrade. Um, it's an angry sin now going all in, and this is bad, look at this, he's rooted to the spot and that RT is just oh man this is sick it's bombarding him half of his health he's gone he's, uh, he has to cancel it but he doesn't and he's gone Fragmaster thought I have nano repair and that will absolutely help me um, and I think he underestimated the uh, strength of the mobile RT there I think they, and with they I mean Team 2, Team 1 mid would actually have had a problem if he could have finished that gun and um, wouldn't be rooted to the spot. Would have had T2, Nano and gun on his commander and, uh, and that could be a problem. Anyways now, Angry Sin 
has no problem with taking this part of the map and that's actually what he's doing not even um, not even gonna reclaim it just gonna rebuild right on the wrecks what um what fragmaster left and then he's not that must be a mistake don't know anyway that's a good strategy just um it's half of the build time and um, build cost queue and build of on top of Rex that a player of the same faction as you leaves so uh, that's what he's doing in the base itself uh, the Crawford lug is um, reclaiming Backmaster's base by some mass by some initial mass to take Coming some shields, he has um, started a T3 mass extractor. Obviously, he's first. No, he's not. I thought he will immediately start T2 mass upgrades. I mean, um, max upgrades. He prefers to finish the T3 mass extractor first. It's a choice you make. Storm. I mean, Angry Sin trying to send his little T1 army here, but the crow for luck was faster with building a little wall, so no one can pass. Actually, one, one little Zooey is trying to look at this the fish swimming against the stream. Oh well, he stopped. Thought. I can't do it. It would break. Sniff. Another two we trying. And then two tanks come along and they just... They just troll past it. And I guess they could have done that uh, from the beginning, but... He didn't. It's, um, and this was the end of the story. Well, there we go. Anyway, gunships from the air factories. Not yet. He's... Um, Ruffluck is building a Marmadon. So does that mean that he thinks he's too late with a T2 bomber? I mean with uh, Azef, with uh, Azef build. You know, he's taken the base, so I could imagine, you know, he've used his uh, build power to take it, so maybe he is. An ASF from I already out to I don't see any bombers. I have one scout coming out. Visions is already also building ASF. He has three now. And Wackel contacts. He lost two mixes here. Hmm. I missed that. What happened? He's building a T2 mass extractor, so I imagine maybe some. Tell me, guys, in the comments. You've probably seen it on the minimap. Was that a T2 Corsair strike from Pigeons? I don't see any any air factories except for this one for hype. Um, Turner has lost a few here. Guys, um, if you're new, you're thinking why is he control King his T2 Max and rebuilding a, a 3T Max structure on top of it? Well, if you rebuild it within the minute, I think with three or four NGs, depending on the tech, but generally three or four. Yeah, it's actually cheaper than um, when you upgrade it from T2 to T3, so I am um, just quite some times. This is what Wacko Contact is doing right now. Absolutely, this was a strike here. This was the same, so 
I think it uh, might have been Corsairs. Look at this, the efficiency. Reclaiming the T3 land factory. Just gotta put that into this massive grade. Max upgrade, I mean. But then, the naval. Because Dickus has um, made a nice home for himself in the middle. It's under attack now. Oh man. Guys, imagine you just mo move to your new place and then bombs and shells are just hitting your shields. So sad. Because Dickus doesn't care though, he's just building another shield and some TMDs to. Um, the cruiser missiles at bay. The bigger problem though is those T2 Aeon destroyers with the range. Four or five of those could do some damage. This dig is prepared though. Look at this. Three T2 RT. Ready to. Uh, Hit any ship from a distance. Angry Sin has amassed a whole army in this corner. I think he didn't want to send it in in the stream. But it's still happening. I think if... Um, I would have a one point of critique on, um, on this game. It is uh, the pathfinding and sending in whole streams of armies. I mean, you actually have to manually select front troops and replace them to the left and the right and to send in armies in the first half will listen and the second one the second half of the third second half will just stand still for a while. Only after a few seconds it will start going forward. And um, that took me a while in the beginning. I was starting playing this game to um, how to get that. Before you know it, you send your whole army in in a stream when you're not watching and uh, against T2 point defense, especially Berber's turrets, that won't do much. And Angry Sin is retreating. What he is building though, that's um, tactical missile launchers. Let's see how far they can reach. Well, the whole base here, so he could do some damage. Place them. A ground attack right between T2 mass extractors and you kill both with one missile strike. Again, if you're new here, that's the way to um, make optimal use of tactical missiles. I don't see any TMD going up yet. Well, here's one. So the, the naval HQ for Lime is uh, protected. His maxes aren't. And he doesn't have any maxes in the middle. So he... Um, be careful. And SMD is going up for the crowd for luck. Let's see how the south is doing. They already have one. Don't see a nuke yet from their eco player. Let's see how the other eco player is doing. Well, he's way too busy with oh no wait this is not the eco player this is the naval player quit store he's defending against the um unwavering naval attack that angry dot has been launching since the beginning but their actual eco player donny he is launching or he's building a nuke So I guess they've scouted that, and uh, that's why they are building um, 
SMDs. No SMDs going up for south and uh, south not I mean but north adds one Q now for team one. Just a precaution. It's a fine line you know between uh, precaution and uh, building your SMD too soon. If you build it too soon and the other team is not even thinking about building a nuke, that's wasted. The other side of the coin, of course, is there's a certain point in the game that especially eco players have so much hives, so many hives they could rush a nuke within uh, half a minute. I mean half a minute that it could be too late for building an SMD, so it's uh, quite a fine line. So I think the only way is to scout well. I just kind of feel it in your guts. The players are very good at that. They don't have to scout it at that much. They kind of see the prints of what's happening. I mean, you see this, you should be, uh, this build, you should be careful. A nuke very easily could fit into that. But also a ring of engineers around something like this. Oh my goodness, that ring doesn't help now, does it? But Wacko contact, I think he didn't see... Um, that there was no shield here. He tried to kill the build power, but with two bombs, could have killed the nuke. I'm very sure of that. So was that a miscalculation, or did the missile, did the bomb somehow hit the angle of the the shield? I'm not sure there. Guys, put it in the comments. Very curious. Okay, so. Some te tactical missile launches. Oh, floating on the water. Ah, look at that. It's nice. Floating on the waves. The T3 nail factory for Big Stick is almost down. And no navy left for uh, Storm. If you're wondering where it is, well, you can see where it is, my friend. It's on the bottom of the sea. Or river. River, I must say. It's a river. Heavily damaged battle cruiser. Absolutely destroying that cruiser over there. And then happily sailing along it, letting all passengers and battle personnel drown. The cruelty of this game knows no bounds. Okay, so angry dot is going res. Some more mess, and look at this build. Going to eco mode. The kind of eco mode you need to really get a strong naval force. I mean, he has got enough T2 destroyers get to get big um, to keep biggest diggers his Neptunes at bay man that was a mouthful to keep biggest diggers navy at bay a little glitch there don't know what happened we might be C said uh, I can't process that uh, pronunciation of yours kenosis Whatever it was. Anyways, Angry Dot is finishing his res. He's going a res. Gonna close some programs here. This is a little too much. Some torps. 
flying towards Team Stu's base and Lime who's just on res, res upgrade, he must be shitting his pants, does he, does he see it? The swords actually going for the naval factory, I think they didn't see that Lime was there. It's not nearly enough to destroy that HQ. The monkey lord from Eterna has been going right beside the mountain pass, trying to cut off the stream of reinforcements that Grishin has been sending in the beginning. I don't see a point though of these, this constant T1 stream. It's a nice mass feel that the crowd could and actually is reclaiming. The only advantage is that he's confined to his base. But the more bricks that he um, is producing, the um, unlikely, the more unlikely it is that he's staying there. Especially now, the monkey lord from Eterna has been killing off this forward base for an angry sin. But he still has the other five backward maxes. I'm just curious how long he will be able to keep it. Angry Dot is sending some enforcements to the mill uh, of the lake. It's an SACU, rest SACU. I think to, um, well, what could you do to reinforce the sea over here? Uh, he's making up his mind, so I thought maybe he's going to build Sam's all over the place. But he thinks now I now we got the monkey lord over here. They can straight claim this base and place my own base on top of it. That's what he's doing. Immediately he starts a transcender. And lays out the rest of uh, the base that is to follow. I think an air fight starts. I was going to say air fart, no, that, that would not be good. Air fight, but Wackel contact sent his ASF in in a stream and that is to the advantage of hype. I think the chances are not equal Um look at this, how tight he um, holds his group. So Wackel contact now on top and Wackel contact is winning. Although the start was uh, was a little bit well, not how you want to start an air fight. I think he uh, lost quite some maze up there, but no problem. Look at this: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. He um he has quite the grid with I think two factories constantly being assisted by hives and new hives appearing every second almost so welcome to contact um, the crow I guess they have the air advantage in numbers let's check 40 and 19 that is 60 visions who has been holding his air back while uh, Hive sacrificed his air that's 40 and let's see Any well it's, um, actually they have more but not really using it While I say it, this 10 or, f 10 or 12 is have joined the fight and uh, 
Your numbers will now be the same. T1. Soon we'll have to think about the monkey that's appearing. They have their SMDs loaded. So if there is a nuke from Team 2 and there isn't one, that's not the problem. What is a problem though, that they don't have air yet. Assume they should be making gunships. What's not helping though for Team 1 is that the Monkey Lord is uh, damaged so badly. So only 17, 17k. And now Eterna, careful that he doesn't lose it. He's um, retreating it. Donnie has been uh, reclaiming some of these wrecks that uh, Angry Dot left. He's trying to make a T3 torpedo launcher and bushes them. That got killed off by the summit. Massive fleet has been built up. I mean, this dick is only has two battle cruisers. Has been building another naval factory. No oh, wait, that's Wheatstorm's naval factory. It's just building it. Build it on the other side. Trying to not kill the pathfinding. Sometimes if the river is flogged with factories, ships tend to have a hard problem sailing through it. But that's a lot of assistance. And this grid is also badass. Look at this. It's um, much eco as well as wider grid, quite an air grid. Let's look at the mass totals. Ibis had almost 700 mass income. His mirror Wacko contact sits on 400, but he doesn't have all his mass storages linked with T2 fabricators. I'm afraid though that looking at that cloud of SF Yep, and that is what he has been prioritizing 120 Hive is now 100, what? 35, oh my goodness I um Let's calculate that Somewhere sitting here So they're still going neck and neck. These battleships have been sending some shells into the shields, but shield boats don't give yet. Five in a group. Now a torpedo ambushing system has staking this ship. Trying to kill it, trying to destroy it. This team is in full eco build mode. Let's see how they're doing. Oh, that is a lot of uh, res units. 
Let's see, it's um, kind of 30. Um, Doni is on 15. Hive is sitting on 29. And I think we're going to see the beginning of a game ender. It's being pinged. Not sure which team is pinging. But you can imagine soon the team sees this going up. Mostly on this map you start building a game ender around the minute of 25. And that's what the other team has been doing. So they started it at minute 25 or 26 I think. Looking at the progression here, Turner is still finishing his massive T2 mass fabricator. Uh, what is it? Fab farm, mass farm. Um, Phew, I would uh, would like to see some bombs falling in here. I um, I managed that. Quite a few times. You see this? Just uh, send one or two bombers. And one bomb is enough to kill the whole fucking field. Anyway, Angry Dot now also concerned with that, so he's starting a shield generator. To actually to protect it. And here a resort generator. It's um, Paragon. It's now one fifth done. And as usual on dual gap, every teammate, most of them actually have been giving four or five or even six hives, depending on how much eco somebody has. The other side, it's mostly two people making. A Maver. There it is. The race is on. Dunny and I am now in full building mode. Contrary to the other team, it's just the two of them building the Maver. I hear a nuke launching. Let's keep an eye on that, where that's gonna land. Not the middle, I think. The sea. A little over here. Did this position? No. They do have SMDs, yes, they do. One over there. I didn't see any nuke markings. Oh, well, I think it is here. Normally I would expect a red nuke marking, but... T3 SACU from Angry Dot is fleeing the scene. Poor NGs. They work so hard, but all their work is in vain. And now their ashes fly through the sky as if it, as if it is nothing. Anyway, this side of the, the team on this side of the map, I think um, Donnie and Hip decided to let them just defend. Sleep, push, um. The crowd for luck, Lime and uh, oh, actually, they're with the two of them, but their push to um, trying to sending some units here. That's not so much for the last 
20 minutes, minutes or a quarter of an hour, but the Navy Angry Dot, he has been pushing all the time it's only now that this, ha this work has become a little harder and it's thanks to those three very well shielded battleships from Heatstorm not the battleship from Diggers Bickers even four more shield boats if these shield boats give in and after that two of his battle cruisers and not to forget what helped very well in the beginning was these four M Bush systems Let's see how far they are and oh that's a yep that's a transport that just got screamed immediately I think it doesn't get the chance to shoot or it's not shooting at the Maver the explosion is killing some drones but he walks back that doesn't take down much the Maver though is at almost 6k on the other side the Para. Oh my goodness, look at this, how fast this has been built and it is building incredibly. It's a whole team effort. Everyone is building. Oh, they can afford it. They have the Maxis in the middle here. Um, no problems in the middle. No navy problems yet. I mean, Quistorm's naval units and army is quite strong, but they have enough units for a while to keep them to keep him at bay. So they're just sending everything they've got into the um, Aragon, and it's finished right now. Absolutely done. Your bombers from Wackleton contact. He's holding it back for the occasion, maybe that somebody is teleporting. Um, so how are they doing? And the Maver is done. Donnie's Maver is ready. Of course, they don't have to be afraid for something that's returning fire yet. The other, the other team does though. They should start with building shields like crazy, and that's what they do. What they are doing. Local contact starts a shield queue. Eterna started a monkey. It's almost done, and a salvation. We're now at minus two. So many air units. That's why my PC says it's a little much. Anyway, let's count some numbers. That's 216 versus the. This is the 230, I think, or 40 or 80. 80. 90 even from hype and he's on top now but the crow also has 120 and patience only 60 so it's um it's uh, quite a draw i think the maver already sending shells to the other base the Pigeons starts another Maver. Let's see what these shells are doing to the shields of the... the due to the shields of the Para. Para 2, 1, 4 shields. Almost finished. Another one started over here.
a strategic missile submarine from Angry Dot lurking beneath the waters, longing to be useful. And I think it will be. Oh my goodness, the shields are down! Oh no! That's a shell right on top of the maver. In a little moment where the shields were all down. And people, you can have so many shields, but obviously when your shields are down and a shell creeps through, through, you're dead in the water. Oh my goodness. And while I'm saying this, I'm very curious, were the shields really down or was it just the two or three shells that hit the, oh my goodness what happened, Turna is dead, his commander, either he controlled or something else uh, happened there, not sure what that was. Anyway, were the shields down because of energy consumption or energy loss or because a few shields of the maver before drained the energy from the shields? That's a question that doesn't get answered right now. Anyway, Wacko Contact seems to give us the answer. He thinks uh, is the first thing, namely that it was not shielded well. And the second maver already on its way. An air fight is also brewing. Back of contact sending forth his ASFs. I am holding them back a little on the under the cover of these Sam's the submarine almost loaded another one here this this guy does have a missile loaded though not a kill pro for luck um, it's a uh, lime who has been controlling his commander I mean, uh, it's try for luck to build an experimental. Yeah, we... Um, this base is already dead. I think uh, maybe that was... Uh, that was a rage quit. A nuke placed right in the middle of Crowd for Luck's base. Um, being sent by Doni, who has been loading it slowly, and another one is almost loaded. And one nuke sent by this strategic missile submarine right into their base, hoping to evade it, but oh man, this one is loaded. That was sad for. Uh, Set for team two. This is empty though, and I don't see another SMD. Yes, this one is empty also. This one is loaded, and another missile, strategic missile sent from a submarine from Angry Dot. So now, uh, now I'm very curious. Is it in range? This one is loaded, or is it not? It's just near this corner. Of course, that's not going to hit now. Taken out. Finally. Wacko contact with uh, kind of 10 T3 bombers. Sending them to the side of the map. He must be very careful. I think 
Hype is immediately sending his army uh, this way. His uh, group of ASFs. Where back of contact sends in his whole group of ASF. Oh my goodness, what a fight. Look at this. They're mingling. Oh, my PC is just uh, exploding, so to say. Wacko Contact does seem to have the numbers. Now let's hope for him that his micro is good. But these Sam's very dangerous. He absolutely crushes Hype's forces. Now actually behind them. Hype does send in though the ASF that he has and he manages to kill one or two or three bombers. The rest of course being immediately prioritized by the Sam bank over here. Four bombers left, one, two, three, four. Um, because Digga sent in, sends in some bombers he has and actually one or two bombs fall but that's what the shield over here can take the Maver still shooting wondering now where no SMD here. One SMD is loaded, so that will not get through. As long as the Maver doesn't kill it. Another nuke. And I don't see don't see any other SMDs. The SMD is down. Just now. It's down after it wasn't loaded, but doesn't matter anymore, Queen Storm has shielded his base so well, but the nuke just creeps through and absolutely kills it. Kills the last and the first unit in the ring here. No mass to reclaim. Queen Storm I think was sitting in the middle of that. And he's out. Witch Storm finished. Wacko Contact though still with many ASF. He's building a Yelona Oz. And don't we like to see that finish? As long as, or now that the um, most of the SF are gone, my PC finally takes it again. No more minus two, it's just uh, zero, zero now. And I think um, Waco Contact won't be able to replenish his SF forces anytime soon. Most of his Grid is gone. The second Maver is up. You see that unfolding. Look at this. It's incredibly massive. And both of them now targeting local contact space. Now the nuke. I saw it. It's where there it is. But um the crowd for luck loaded his SMD over here. So that gets taken down. But a bug is on its way. Wacko contact he says I have enough. It's counter pay for me. And um uh, this is the end for him. Underwater explosion. Five engineers. I mean, torpedo launches just 
you know, simply sitting there are taking us collateral damage. An enormous group of jesters, hilarious from Hive, taking care of these engineering stations. Same time, from Wheatstorm's Navy, a nuke arises out of the waters and target for Lux air grid absolutely destroys it and just because you can Mavis shells hit the already destroyed base I mean why not better be careful and a satellite I mean two satellites well the aircraft flux base isn't dead now I don't know what is so guys, absolutely exhilarating how this game turned out. Really, I didn't think the Maver would win, but another game is waiting for you, so... This time a little shorter, but back with action from beginning to start, so... Click on the video Coiling Dragon River 5v5 and... I mean, knock yourselves out.